I'm Peter Sharoshi, I'm the editor of the Drug Reporter website and I'm sitting here with Angela Constance who is the Minister of Drug Policy at the Scottish Government. Scotland uh, has one of the highest rates of drug overdoses in Europe. Yes, so is it the highest? It is, it's well documented that Scotland has the highest rate of drug related deaths in Europe. Uh, that's why just over two years ago the First Minister of Scotland declared a national mission. That's a national mission to save lives, but also to improve lives uh, by taking a Team Scotland whole government approach uh, by uh, supporting and really advocating harm reduction, but also supporting people uh, into recovery too. Can you explain us what are the roots of this overdose crisis? What is behind, what are the social factors behind it? So the social factors are wide, varied, complex. Um, you will be familiar with the link between drug deaths and deprivation. So in Scotland, you are 15 times more likely to die of a, a drug overdose if you are from one of our poorest uh, communities. We also know the co-occurrence between substance use and mental health conditions. We also know that in Scotland, um, in terms of the people we lose, that we still primarily have an opioid crisis. However, it's polydrug use and opioids combined either with cocaine, crack cocaine, or in particular benzodiazepines. And we also have a higher proportion of people who in inject drugs. So drug taken in Scotland, you will see some higher risk factors. And what is the explanation of the difference between Scotland and the other parts of the UK? It's a really important question. So what we know about Scotland is that problematic uh, drug use is about double the rate. So in Scotland, maybe 1.6% of the population would have problematic drug use. In England, it's 0.8%. It's uh, we also have a higher prevalence of opioid deaths, but crucially, deaths where benzodiazepines are implicated. So by comparison, um, the implication of benzodiazepines in the lives that we lose in Scotland since 2013 has increased by 450%, whereas in, in England um, it's about 50%. And the third reason is we don't have enough people in treatment. Um, and that's where we all have to take responsibility. Um, and that's why we are introducing um, what we call medication-assisted treatment standards. So that's about quick access to treatment. It's about choice, informed choice. It's about outreach, reaching out, and also about retaining people in treatment that is right for them at the right time, but also making those wider connections with the social determinants of good health too. Media reported that most of the victims are from the so-called train spotting generations. It's like older people, right? Is that correct? So I think we need to have a bit of care about that because in some regards it can be a bit of a lazy narrative. So the so-called train spotting generation was back in, in the 80s. We are now in 2023. So the average age of someone who dies of a drug-related death is 44. Um, now, 44 is not old, not old. You should be at the prime of your life. And what we also know about the people we, we lose is that many of them will have had very long histories um, of, of drug use. We also know that the majority of people we lose in the six months prior to their death, they have had contact with a service, whether that's a health service whether it's contact with the justice system uh, or whether it's you know, another public health service. So we really need to be, as well as you know, reforming laws, which aren't all in our gift in Scotland, but we really need to be investing in reforming services. And that's exactly what we're doing in Scotland, is investing and reforming in our services, but also tackling stigma and discrimination. How much autonomy and discretion Scotland has in this issue? Like how much can you f shape your own drug policy in Scotland and how much responsibility lies in Westminster? So there's a lot we can do um, and it's important that we focus on what, what we can do in terms of the, the, the here and now, in terms of 
turning this crisis around, I describe it as both a sprint and a marathon. You know, first and foremost, we need to keep people breathing. We need to be preventing overdose, but we also need to be improving lives. And that starts uh, in the early years. Uh, so it really needs to be that um, cross-portfolio approach where we are thinking about the needs of people uh, who are at risk um, of drug use and drug overdose in terms of housing, education, employment and good health and good primary uh, care as well. So in terms of the things that are within the gift of the Scottish Government, we have control of our education, our health and our justice system and we have partial powers over our economy uh, over and over our welfare. The powers that remain reserved to the UK government would be things like international relations, but also those bigger, bigger macroeconomic powers and the bigger welfare powers. And also crucially uh, for the work that we do, uh, the UK government continue to have control over the Misuse of Drugs Act, which is the, the broad legal framework in which everybody in the UK has, has to operate. So that has some implications for harm reduction services. Um, I would like the Misuse of Drugs Act uh, reviewed. We'll continue to engage with the UK government based on the evidence. We'll continue to seek to have that evidence-based discussion and debate. Um, and meantime, we will work as hard as we can, as constructively as we can, to do everything that we can within the powers we have. There was a grassroots initiative in Glasgow to open a mobile uh, consumption room. Mm. Uh, do you think there will be legal consumption rooms soon in, in Scotland? So I am absolutely committed to doing everything possible I can. I will leave no stone unturned within the powers I have because safer drug consumption facilities save lives. There are over a hundred uh, safe consumption rooms services across the world. Many of them are in Europe. I have visited one in New York and having had the, the privilege of visiting a service, I'm more determined than ever. This is a very detailed and delicate area of work because the Misuse of Drugs Act remains reserved to the UK government. They um, have repeatedly uh, said to me that they are not convinced of the evidence of safe drug consumption facilities. I, of course, and the Scottish Government uh, dispute that. We have produced uh, our own papers, our own evidence uh, based on European and international evidence. So I've got no doubts uh, that safe drug consumption facilities uh, save lives. And there's also an opportunity that to prevent people first and foremost from dying, but also to have that richer discussion about what we can do to support people to improve their health and to improve uh, their life chances. So in terms of where we are at Scotland now, um, there is a, a proposition, a proposal, um, where our partners in Glasgow um, have worked closely with Police Scotland and that proposition it has been uh, sent to the Crown Office, what we call the Crown Office and uh, Procurator Fiscal Service. And they will assess that and then they will pass that to an independent Lord Advocate. Now, what our Lord Advocate can't do is that she can't overturn a UK Government Act of Parliament. But what her consideration will be is in terms of prosecution policy, what is and what isn't in the public interest. And we still await um, an outcome from the Crown Office and the Lord Advocate. What would you say, how is your relationship to Westminster right now in drug policy issues? Do you have a dialogue? So we have a dialogue. Um, so it's fair to say that we have a dialogue and I engage with the UK government at absolutely every opportunity. It's also a matter of public record to say that we have different views on drug policy, particularly in and around harm reduction. Um, I would like to see a you know, proper network of drug checking facilities, for example. I would like to see the more extensive rollout of heroin-assisted treatment. We have a project in Glasgow. Uh, these projects are subject to Home Office uh, licensing. I've discussed at length uh, the need for safer drug consumption facilities, particularly uh, in our Scottish cities. 
So we have a different view and fundamentally I would like to see the Misuse of Drugs Act, which is nearly as old as me, uh, reviewed um, because it is over 50 years old, that legislation. And as we know from this conference that we're all attending this week, that the world has changed a lot in 50 years and there is now more than ever a need to be following the evidence about what works to save and improve lives. What do you think about the discussions here at the, at the UN uh, Commission on Narcotic Drugs? Was there any lesson learned or anything, any impressions you had here? So yes, so it's really important for Scotland to be listening and learning to the very best of international experience. And we have much in common uh, with other countries. Uh, so some of the work that other countries are, are focused on in terms of tackling stigma, in terms of tackling discrimination, there is a huge focus at this conference on harm reduction and overdose uh, prevention. Uh, so it's important to Scotland uh, that we learn from international um, evidence. It's, it's also true to say that different cultures have different legal systems, you know, different approaches, you know, perhaps sometimes uh, different values and cultural um, expectations. So while you can't always shift and lift a solution in one country to your own, but you can really listen, really learn and adapt uh, the evidence uh, to the circumstances in your own country and, and that's what I seek to do. According to recent data there was a small uh, re reduction in the number of overdose cases right in Scotland so is that a sign of success of, of drug policies? So today um, we have published uh, suspected drug deaths. Now the caveat here is suspected drug deaths are not confirmed drug deaths. Um, but we publish this information more regularly. It's not official statistics, it's Police Scotland management information. But sometimes it can be a barometer. So, yeah, cautious, cautious welcome that suspected drug deaths in Scotland for 2022 have reduced by 16%. However, I have to say, drug deaths in Scotland remain too high and one life lost to drugs is one too many. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.